Well, what is up, guys? It's Drifts and Lifts here. Alright, guys, so today, um, it's gonna be kind of a random video with a bunch of little stuff thrown in it. So, um, as you guys know, the wagon's on the road and it is awesome. It feels great. So, uh, a couple things I wanna do to it today, though. I'm gonna go over to Turbo Scott's and uh, we're gonna swap over tranny mounts on the car because the old tranny mount in this thing is pretty. It's pretty bad, uh, you can see the shifter hopping up and down quite a bit. So I bought a new tranny mount, and I'm gonna swap over to the old style mount. So, um, I'll, you guys will see when I get there. But basically it's, it's a little, it's an older style mount, but they're a lot easier to get the replacement uh, rubber pucks for. So I got one of those, brand new. Um, so yeah, actually, also, right now, before I go to Scott's, I'm gonna swap these wheels onto my girlfriend Sid's car. So beautiful blue. Um, I got this thing running a while back. You guys probably remember that it wasn't running for like the longest time and I was having such a big problem with it. Um, what it ended up, ended up being originally is the MAF sensor went on it. So, or sorry, the actual MAF sensor didn't go. It was the connector to the MAF. So the, like the little spades, they weren't pressing down on the pins good enough. So I went and replaced a bunch of stuff. You know, I replaced the math. That's why I kind of canceled that out as being not the math, but it, it was the actual connector. So, you know, I took some suggestions from guys on Turbo Bricks. One guy said, you know, the in-tank pump's definitely gone. So I replaced the in-tank pump. And when I was doing that, the rubber fuel hose that goes from the pump to the apparatus, like the, uh, the fuel tank, fuel pump uh, assembly, that one fell off because uh, I didn't clamp it hard enough. So then it opened up a whole different problem where the car wouldn't even run at all. So, you know, and finally I asked Dan what he thought I should do and he said, go back in the tank, there's probably something wrong. So I did that and like he, like he thought, there's the, you know, the fuel uh, hose was off. So yeah, this thing's running. Sid has a good car now. I'm stoked because this thing has such low kilometers. 140,000 kilometers and it's like pristine condition. So just to make it look a little less uh, grandma for Sid, I'm gonna throw these wheels on. And actually I got these wheels, I was just gonna use them as like drift spare wheels. I got them with the black wagon when I bought it. So that's pretty cool, right? Cause I got the black wagon for 650 bucks. It was a pretty good deal. And it uh, came with like a, a decent cool set of wheels. And they're five by 108, so I'm not gonna have problems with not being hub centric and things like that. So, all right guys, um, before I get started, I wanna say that there's a new design out on the Drifts and Lifts store. So uh, if you guys have seen my Volvo Drift Ale shirt with the truck and the beer, so we did that, but we changed it up. We're doing a Drifts and Lifts Volvo Drift Logger. So here's the design right here. I'm super stoked about it. Davis killed it again. So, there's the design. Um, that's out on the Drifts and Lift store right now. So if you guys want to buy one, a uh, great way to support the channel and also get, uh, get a really dope shirt while you're at it. I'm going to order one as well. I'm going to have the whole Drifts and Lifts beer collection. So I'll have one of the wagon, uh, one of the gold car, and one of the truck. So we're going to get to making one for the wagon eventually. That'll be a little ways down the road. But the one for the, uh, for the gold car is super sick with the flames out the hood and that kind of thing. Holy shit, there's a wasp on my hand. <laughs> um, Get out here. Anyway, so yeah, that's up for sale right now. So you guys can get one. Um, the link to the description, or sorry, the link to my Drifts and Lift store is in the description of this video. So check that out. All right, so now on to the video. Uh, I'm gonna swap these wheels on. Sid's gonna go to work and I'm going to go over to Scott's with a different tranny mount. And another thing, I think while we're at it, me and Scott are both gonna do the camber mod. So if you guys haven't seen how to do that, I'll be showing you how in this video. So like I said, it's gonna be a bunch of different random stuff. And then after, if we got a bit of time, we're probably gonna go for a rip in Scott's car so he can test out the camber mod. I'm not gonna drift the wagon today uh, because it still has an open differential and I've, I actually tried to drift it last night. And it just like, you know, you get it out and then the, mo the momentum doesn't really continue to carry. Like the one tire will just start spinning. Um, it might be a G80 locker, but again, the G80 locker is the same as an open diff past 40 kilometers an hour. It just opens up completely. So if this is a locker in this car, me and Aaron are gonna do the locker mod this weekend. If it's an open diff, we're gonna weld it. So yeah, that's the plan. I'm gonna throw these wheels on and see how it looks. All right guys, so. There's Sid's car with the wheels on it. She's just leaving her work. 
That looks pretty darn good. Yeah, all I was really going for is just making it look a little bit less grandma. Um, you know, a stock 740 is pretty grandma looking, especially a non-turbo GLE with all the chrome everywhere. Oh, look, I just painted the crap out of my garage floor. Not like this garage floor hasn't seen horrible things. But, all right, so that's done. On to our next step of the video. Um, yeah, I bought new spark plugs for the black wagon, so I may as well throw those in as well. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go to Scott's once he's off at six o'clock. So yeah, it's just four o'clock right now. So I'm gonna hang out for a bit, get something to eat, uh, change the spark plugs on this, and then we're good to go. So I'll see you guys at Scott's house. All right guys, so, ah, freaking wind. Getting Braden Carlson problems. Um, all right, so we're at Scott's house and Cole's house. So me and Scott are gonna do two uh, mechanical things at one time. I'm gonna do the tranny mount on my car and Scott's gonna do the camber mod on his car. We don't have a whole ton of time because we wanna go drift before the light goes down, uh, before it's night out. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how we do the camber mod. Uh, it's free, that's a good thing about it. You can always go and buy, you know, uh, Calpenke Racing. He makes some really good like adjustable strut tops and stuff like that, but this is free and all you need is a drill and a basic set of hand tools. So we're gonna do it this way. Um, I like free things. I'm sure most of you guys do as well. So yeah, uh, my tranny mount is, has seen better days. It's pretty saggy. It flops around a fair amount. So I'm going to switch it, like I said, to the older style mount uh, with a brand new rubber puck. So there's the old style mount with the rubber puck and then I got a brand new one in here. So yeah, I'm gonna, when, once I get under the car, I'll show you guys what I'm doing here. It's a really simple, really, really simple. All right guys, so I'm, I'm under the car right now, as you can see, I'll park my camera right there. So first we're gonna take off this. So if we put, it's a, it's a 17 and uh, that's just gonna go on there. We're gonna take that off and we're going to take well, I guess I could take this heat shield off too because I'm never going to be running a stock exhaust anymore. But um, yeah, so so they're going to be 14 mil for the, the four tranny mount bolts, which are going to be right there. Um, and then there's some other ones on the other side. So there's four 14s and then the 117 to get the bottom mount off. And uh, then there's one more bracket. Oh, I feel like I'm going to get hit by a car here. <laughs> There we go, 17 mil nuts off there. All right guys, so I took the other two uh, tranny mount bolts off and it dropped right out. So as you can see, I'm pretty sure that this is the original tranny mount that was in this car. I'm almost positive. And as you can see, like the rubber is completely separated and there's a lot of, there's a lot of play. If my finger can just bend it that easy, think of what the tranny could do. So uh, yeah, it's good that I'm replacing this because that's definitely the reason why my shifter was going up and down so much. If you guys have the same problem, um, automatic transmissions aren't quite as bad for this, but the, auto, the manual transmissions, you'll really notice it. Um, if your shifter's hopping up and down, and not generally if it goes side to side under torque, that means your engine mounts are messed up. But if it goes up and down a lot, that means your tranny mount's on its way out. So take a look at that. And uh, if you have the same kind of problem, I would recommend replacing it. Um, it makes it a lot nicer for shifting too. So yeah, I'm gonna go uh, under there and I gotta take this mount off. I'll show you guys right now. All right, so this little mount right here with the four bolts. So there's one, two, and three, four. So I'm gonna take that off and then I'm gonna replace that with the other one because this is the, uh, the secondary mount that goes with that style tranny mount, I'm gonna put my, my one that goes with the old school style on. Okay, if you guys notice, I have the jack under the transmission, keeping it in the same place it always was. Uh, that way, you know, I don't really have um, problems with it going up and down, and right when I put the new tranny mount on, it'll be right in the same location that I want it to be, so. All right guys, so I got the secondary mount out. That's just what I'm calling it, secondary mount. I don't know what the heck this I'm supposed to call this. But as you can see, so this is the old one. Uh, this is the one we're putting in. 
So this one's held in by four bolts. This one's only two, but you're still gonna have to put the other bolts in when you do put this one in. So as you can see, it's a little bit different of a style. This one has an up and down, straight up and down force on the transmission. And this one is held in like this on an angle so that's the problem with this mount is it wears out eventually because the weird awkward force that's put on this bushing but it's a lot easier to change this and okay I see see if you want to replace this mount this is what it looks like but I went to Lord Co and I could not find any of these mounts so it would just be these two bolts right here and then it'd come out so I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to this for now because I have a brand new one and it's really cheap only $13 at Lord Co um, so yeah I'm gonna slap this in after I take that nut off and I replace this mount. And then the other mount is going to just place right on here essentially. I'll show you guys when I get there. I don't know. All right guys, so here's the finished product. I got a little bit carried away. So if you look under there, that's the new mount um, right there. So the way this old style tranny mount just bolted on was through that one stud, just right there. So that's what it looks like. And we're gonna take the jack out and it's gonna be nice and tight now. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a really big improvement on the old mount because the old mount was really old. Um, it was. Yeah, 420,000 kilometers on this, this tranny mount, so it's definitely seeing better days. So I'm realistically probably just gonna throw this in the garbage because I have a lot of these. So, um, yeah, maybe I'll keep it for someone who wants to do like a manual transmission swap. Hint, hint, Scotty boy. <laughs> so yeah, that's that. So now I'm going to show you guys um, how Scott does the camber mod, yeah. Pretty straightforward process, pretty easy. So he's just doing this side. Um, I'll, I'll redo the whole thing when he goes to the other side, just because we'll start from start from scratch on the other side, show you guys the whole process. And then after we're done that, we're gonna go for a little bit of a drift. So uh, yeah, should be a pretty fun, fun little drift session. Hopefully there's not a bunch of big truck guys, because apparently Scott and Cole went to the drift spot and there's like 20 guys in like diesel trucks all crowding around the drift spot and taken over like it's their place. So um, yeah, you can't really drift there when there's 20 diesel trucks blocking the road. So hopefully that's not the case today. Turbo Scott in the building. That The building we like to call this beautiful world. <laughs> All right guys, so we're starting on the next side. So I'll show you step by step how we do the camber mod. I know this video is kind of long and random, lots of Lots of random tech stuff. And then we'll have some drifting at the end, which will be good. So we're gonna start off with taking off the wheel. That'll make things a lot easier. So we'll do that. All right guys, so the first step is we're gonna take off this top strut nut uh, right here. So Scott's gonna buzz it off with the impact. There we go. So now what's gonna happen is we're going to drop this out. So with a little bit of help, that comes out. A Little bit of pushing, pushing it through the hole, you know, that's how we do. <laughs> oh, sway bar, uh. I forgot about that. <laughs> so yeah, before this can drop down the whole strut, uh, you're gonna have to disconnect that sway bar. Cole said he didn't have to. I don't know what the fuck he was talking about because Every time I've done this, it's impossible to drop it down without doing this. Uh, the sway bar is holding the whole strut assembly up pretty good, so just gotta take the sway bar off. Scott's gonna use some muscle into it. I'm not into BBW stuff, but I gotta say, this BBW big black wagon is looking fucking sweet. Yeah, no BBW shit. That's no fun. All right, just waiting on Scott here, and then we're gonna get to our next step. Okay, all right guys, so as soon as Scott disconnected that sway bar end link, 
the whole strut dropped out of its top piece. So if you'll notice, we're just gonna bring this um, just kind of off to the side. We don't we don't want to move it too too far because those brake lines are already getting kind of stretched. So they still got a little play in them, so we're fine. Um, yeah, struts off to the side. Now we're gonna get to what we're actually doing on the top pad. It helps, uh, Scott just got this impact the compressor from his parents and this has helped us a lot with projects. I haven't had an impact ever, so I've always done shit with hand tools. It takes like twice as long. So uh, this is really nice to have an impact. You can just buzz stuff off. So it's just those two nuts on these studs holding the top head in. So if we get a bit of a wiggle, There we go. So the top hat is out. So now what we're gonna do guys, uh, so this is the way it was in. Um, the way I know is there's more space in between this stud and the center between uh, as there is between this one. So you know this goes at the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bang this stud out. So we're gonna put it on, uh, on the workbench and just smack the stud out. It's just held in there with a spline essentially. So that's what Scott's gonna do. It can be kind of a bitch, they're in there pretty good sometimes, but a good smack should get it out. Yeah, just some pet penetrating lubricant to lube things up, make them all lubricated. There you go. So the stud came out just like that, not too hard. Almost shook all the stuff off the tool bench. <laughs> That's all good. Okay, so next step. All right guys, so uh, let's see here. So if we look, this is how it was originally, right? So if we look, that's where the stud would have gone up through there. So all we're doing is we're taking this. So this is stock. We're gonna slide this inwards, just like that. So essentially you wanna get it into the maximum position where this uh, center piece is touching the body, the, the top strap mount of the body. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a Sharpie and just circle a little hole right in the center of that. And then that's where we're gonna drill our new hole. And uh, then we're gonna put the stud back through that hole. It's gonna give us a little bit of camber. So. If you want to grab that, Scott. There we go. Um, okay, so we want to, if I push it in, Scott's going to sharpie it a bit. Okay, so that's our maximum position. He's just doing a sharpie hole right in the middle of that. All right, that can drop out. Okay, so if we look on this top hat, there's our little Sharpie mark. So that is where we want to drill for our new stud location. I apologize about this wind, guys. I know, I know. I need to get a wind cover for the camera. It's not good. Old school Nikon. It's a good point and shoot for taking pictures, but it's not great for what I'm doing. I need to save up a bit of money, but hey, you guys buying a lot of my t-shirts and supporting me on Patreon, it's getting me closer to be able to do cool things like this, right? Get a new camera, get proper coilovers in my car, um, stuff like that. So yeah, thanks a lot guys, really appreciate it. And I hope that the videos are entertaining for you guys in return. Uh, that's what I'm trying to go for. So, we're going to Scott now. There we go guys, that's the uh, difference from hole to hole. Hole to hole to hole to hole to hole to hole. All right, um, so yeah, now we're putting just a slightly bigger bit on it. We're gonna try to make it roughly the same size as this hole. Um, the way you do it is once you put that stud back in there, you basically, we use the impact and it sucks the stud through and basically makes its own splines again. Okay guys, so, 
Now the top hat is in there. So as you can see, this nut it has just been started on it. So what I'm gonna do is get under there and I'm gonna hold this in place so Scott can impact it. And once the impact kind of sucks it in there, it's just gonna pull and basically make its own spline so it'll be stuck right in there. Um, yeah. All right, so there's the finished product. Uh, I just had to get underneath there and hold the stud in so the impact had something to work against. So now it sucked it up, it's made, essentially made its own splines. And now we're at the last step. We're just gonna put the, uh, whatever it's called, the rod that goes through here. We're gonna put it back up and Scott's gonna impact it on and then we're Gucci. I hate wasps. They're evil creatures from the seventh layer of hell. No purpose. All right, so sway bar end link is in. Scotch is putting on the wheel. All right, so I guess now would be the time to let you guys know that uh, you should do an alignment after you do this. Uh, anytime you change, you know, ride height, adjust toe, um, do camber mods, things like that, you're gonna wanna do an alignment after. Alignments can be eh, kind of expensive, I guess, 150 bucks at most places. So usually I just eyeball align my cars. It seems to work all right. Uh, it's definitely not perfect. I'm really budget in that way. But uh, as far as I know, the camber mod doesn't change the, the toe settings a whole lot, like barely any. Anytime I've done the camber mod, it felt pretty darn similar. It tracks straight still. Um, so yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. So if you guys look, now Scott has camber. Boom, noticeable. So obviously it's not a huge drastic change like an extended lower control arm or something like that would be, but it's free and it gives you a little bit of camber. I have, I actually have gotten the car aligned once I did this mod and uh, stock they're about zero point, sorry it was negative 0 0.2 roughly. And uh, after I got it aligned with the camber mod, it ended up around negative 2.1, 2.2. So uh, it gives you two degrees of camber. Um, as far as like a track car handling, um, if you're say like a time attack car, I find like two degrees of camber is perfect. It just gives the wheel just enough roll. So when you're in a corner, the wheel's perfectly flat on the pavement again. I know the drift alignments are pretty crazy. Guys go like negative, like crazy amount of camber and stuff. They go like negative five plus. But um, yeah, and that does work pretty well for drifting if you have the proper caster and toe to go with it and angle mods too. But uh, this is a really basic setup. So this negative two camber will feel pretty darn good. So yeah, I guess it is time to go for a drift. So we're gonna potentially inhale things and then we're gonna go for a drift. All right, we're out here. We got Turbo Scott. He's ready to do something that others cannot. It's a big dirty diesel truck. Nice truck. All right. I think we're gravy. run by Turbo Scott. I think he likes that camber mod.
Scott say just hit fuel cut. Oh damn dude, he was coming in fucking hot. Alright guys, Scott is nice enough to let me uh, take the silver bullet out for a rip. So let's see, see how this goes. like 99% sure my car just got tapped and I'm 100% okay with it <laughs> all right guys that was pretty fun <laughs> uh, yeah Scott's car has a bit of a fuel cutting issue um, if you go more than three-quarter throttle it seems to fuel cut and then you lose all power for a bit so it's kind of scary when you're drifting and that happens because you got to kind of just cope with it whatever happens so if you look you can kind of see the lines on the ground I went really wide here and then continued in and if you look at these marks right over here yeah the farthest marks the farthest line and it uh, looks like, I didn't even notice when I was driving, I was, too, I was paying attention to the drifts, but um, I guess I was like super close to wall tapping. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So yeah, it's not good to tap your friend's cars. That's kind of out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I think we're gonna get out of here. Train's coming, or unless Scott wants to do another rip. I'll do another, another lap. All right, Scott's gonna do another rip. Oh yeah. Dive. Holy fuck, what? Do the old duck and dive. What was that? Oh. Alright. Our time here has expired. Time to get out. 20 minute rule. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Alright guys, that was a pretty fun sesh. Scott kills it as always. Um, if you, yeah, if you noticed, Scott's uh, car is fuel cutting on him. Uh, he's got a bit of a wastegate issue. We've tried to pan it out, but we can't figure out what it is. Uh, it, it'll slowly boost creep all the way up till fuel cut. So if you noticed in the video, he ever like kind of straightened out a little bit. That was because the fuel cut and it just like, you know, hits about 15 PSI. As he's drifting, it creeps from about 10 and then makes its way all the way to 15. And for an LH 2.4 car, that's where a fuel cut is. So uh, yeah, it's a kind of a pain in the ass. So he's gonna try to figure that out pretty soon here. Anyways guys, I hope you liked the video. Um, that was a lot of fun. Um, good thing I got to show you the camber mod. That's a good little trick if you guys wanna do that. It's free, right? So uh, it's not a bad thing to do. And it feels pretty good. So make sure, just check out the Drifts and Lifts store. The link to the store is in the description of this video right here. So you guys can get your uh, your Volvo Volvo Drift Logger shirt. So there's the Volvo Drift Ale, like many of you have seen. And now we got Volvo Drift Logger as part of the deal. So um, yeah, guys, check that out if you haven't already. I uh, really appreciate it, all you guys that have bought stuff. Uh, thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks to all you guys for watching, um, means a lot to me, uh, you guys are the reason I can keep doing this. So as far as the channel goes, uh, things to come in the near future, I'm going to be 
welding the diff on the wagon pretty soon here. If it's a G80 locker, like I said, I'm gonna be doing the locker mod, and if it's an open diff, I'm gonna be doing uh, just a straight welded diff. So Aaron's gonna be doing that this Saturday for me. Today is Tuesday, so a couple days from now. And uh, yeah, once we're done that, then I'm gonna get, you know, we're gonna go film some pretty cool street drifting videos with it. I have a feeling this wagon's gonna feel pretty good. Um, I need to do the knuckles on it. We're gonna do knuckles for me and Scott and Cole. Uh, like I said in uh, the video where I bent the 940 back into place, we're gonna make up a jig and then we're gonna replicate those knuckles. So yeah, lots of cool things to come. And if you guys don't already know, I'm going to be taking the A-Tractor to the Penticton Drift Union Matsuri, September 2nd and 3rd. So that's gonna be an absolute riot. Uh, we're gonna get as many Volvo guys out as we can. We're hoping to have about five 740s on the track. So that's definitely something to look forward to. So there you go. Like and subscribe for inefficient Volvo fridges. Peace out, guys.